generals 17 years to relinquish power. Yes, the, the number, there is no theory on how much years you need to heal the divisions of a society to create this middle class. I am not saying that 17 was, was right. It could have been 10 or, or 20. In, in Spain, it was 40 years. In other countries, it had been 35. Well, I, I, I believe that the number of years is not part of a theory. But what was part of the concept from the very first day was that this government was a transitory government. For example, the government never accepted to create a political party to support the government. Mm -hmm. Something that generally neo-fascist or neo-communist governments immediately do. They create a political party. Mm -hmm. Never this government allowed that because they understood that if you create a political party that is part of the government, then you institutionalized the authoritarian government. So the government really knew that it was a transitory government. But it's very difficult for a government like that to get out of power because it's the famous saying, it's very, it may be easy to mount a tiger, but how do you dismount the tiger without the tiger eating you? And then came the classical liberal economists who said the way to dismount the tiger is, is at the same time to create prosperity by free market reforms that we were discussing, create the middle class and, clear, crucially, create gradually the institutions for democracy so that you will not have from one day to the another elections. So we began in 1980 by first studying and proposing a new constitution for Chile. Mm. That was very important. I remember I, I even wrote in that constitution, for example, a paragraph about the freedom to work. I was always impressed by the fact that a poor person, a person who comes from a province, could not work in the city unless they have a, a, a permission. Yeah, some kind of internal passport. Some right? kind mm -hmm. of internal passport. I said, that damages the, the very poor. So I wrote in the Constitution a line that is still there, and I read it every morning, but, not, that I says, no law, decree, or act of authority can prevent anyone from having a, a work or a job. Imagine that principle. It's two lines, but it's about freedom of work. Then we put another one. You cannot expropriate property without paying in cash, not in debt, because the agrarian reform, the funds were paid long State, term safe, state without funds. inflation adjustment. Mm -hmm. So basically you confiscate. Then we created a, a lot of rights, like the American Bill of Rights, not so eloquent, regrettably. Mm. So that was 1980. Then we introduced an independent central bank. We knew that governments, in order to win votes in Latin America, printed money, created inflation, and expropriated the poor who cannot protect themselves against inflation. They keep what economists call cash balances, and inflation eats on cash balances. Inflation does not eat on real productive assets. So we created an independent central bank. I send that, we sent advisors to the U.S. to study the Federal Reserve to the Bank of England. Imagine, in 1980, mm. nine years before the actual transitions. Then we created a law allowing television to be private. In Chile, by constitution, only the government or the, the church. Catholic the church could have a television. Imagine the most powerful communicational device. So the transition to democracy was that not elections immediately, but, no, but, but exactly. institutional change exactly. in order to prepare... Exactly. We created a, 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 a law of political parties so that political parties should be transparent. But that specific, uh, that specific constitution, on the other hand, established General Pinochet as a lifetime senator. Yes. That was, in my view, a mistake. I, let me be, tell you I disagree. But that is not something that prevents us. Was that a concession you had to make to the generals in exactly. order to... Exactly. Well, we didn't. We were not the power in the... We were influencing with ideas. But if, 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 if the president, basically because of a matter of personal security, you see, hmm. I, I remember he said, well, but if I... I am giving to give away power. No general gives away power. Who will prevent me from being killed in the streets. I need uh, people who protect me. If I am just a, a, a retiree, so if I am set up for life, I will have some protection. Now, it's not unreasonable. Is that a, I mean, now, is that I the, is that the a, price you need to pay in order to... A very the price in, in, the, in the UK, that is understanding, is a democracy. 
you have the lords. Hmm. Not only you, but even your, your, your children. <laughs> so come on. In Sweden, you have a monarchy. So, so these are, you see, nuances. Mm. Now, I am against senator, deputies, presidents uh, for life. I am against anything for life. I believe in, in, I am a permanent freedom revolution. I believe that people should earn their job. But that was a very, very small concession to get a transition toward a democracy. If you look at Chile as an example for the rest of the world, uh, amazingly, uh, Chile has even been an example for Sweden, I think. One day, at the end of the 90s, maybe 1999, I received here, in, in a room there, a delegation from the Swedish parliament. And I was very honored. I have a great admiration for Swedish democracy, for Swedish society, for Swedish history. I disagree with the level of taxes, <laughs> but a lot of other people do. But... I said, of course, I will receive this delegation. And there they arrived, very uh, uh, serious people with very good uh, questions. And they said, look, Sweden wants to look to Chile on pensions, not on other things. We have learned a lot of other things from Sweden. So I met them. I remember one member of parliament, Mr. Bo Kernberg. Mm, Bo Kernberg. Yes. Mm. A he was, he was the, a leading of the pension reform. For yes, Liberal a Party. very intelligent man. Uh, they made very difficult questions. Uh, we were maybe an hour, maybe two hours. And, and we had this extraordinary meeting. And I even remember something. I, I have seen, they, at the very end, they said, look, we will give you a gift. And they gave me this, it says that the Riksdag here. Yes, Swedish Riksdag. It's a very beautiful <laughs> thing. I know this is too open handed <laughs> But in order to make a joke, I said, I hope this is not for me to commit ritual suicide like the Japanese. It's a puku. Please, what have I done wrong? And then they, we were all having a good time. So, so the Chilean pension system has been uh, kind of an inspiration to, to a lot of other countries since then, I think. 20 countries, even some of in Eastern Europe, for example, Poland was the first one. I, I engaged with the Solidarity government there, and today you see the Polish workers, the Polish young people have a personal account like the Chilean one. And then came Hungary, Kazakhstan, a former Soviet Republic, Slovakia, nine Latin American countries, Mexico, a huge country. In Mexico there are now 33 million workers who have a personal retirement account like Chile. And then Sweden. Even though it's a small reform, you allow people to put only 2.5% of wages. It's a very good beginning. Uh, uh, you cannot evaluate it only two, three years because, of course, markets go up and down. People should understand that this is for the long term. But if, if, if you look at the Chilean uh, success story, so what are the essentials in the sense? It is, it is free markets... I think you are free trade agreements all, all over the world. And what has this, this has led to economic growth, I guess? Yes. Look, the essential is open to the world, first competition. We are maybe one of the most open countries in the world. Our average uh, tariff rate is only 3%. I am on record saying, why don't we abolish 3%, we abolish customs, and we become a free trade country like Hong Kong was with enormous success. Second, these structural reforms that create owners in land, in pension, in several sectors. An ownership society. Ownership society, absolutely crucial. Third, equality of opportunity. I believe, you see, that growth should not be only uh, income per capita. It should be about reducing infant mortality. It should be about extending...